Hi, in this video, I will show you how to create a stunning fashion website using Blossom Feminine Free WordPress theme. First, I will walk you through the free version and its features, and then we will be exploring the pro version along with what extra features and benefits you will get from it. And then we will also make a comparison between the two. Then I will cover the step-by-step -step procedure to install and activate the theme. I will then walk you through the customizer settings of Blossom Feminine and from there we will step into using each of these customizers to build or create a complete website. The video is quite long but I have added timestamps in the description box below so you can easily skip to the part that you want to. The process is extremely simple, so even if you are a complete beginner to building a website, you can also easily follow the steps and build yourself a complete website. So let's get started. To download the Blossom Feminine Free theme, you'll have to go to our website blossomthemes.com and from shop, go to Free Themes, go to Blossom Feminine Free. I will also leave a link in the description box below so that you can easily have access to this sales page of Blossom Feminine Free Theme. So if you scroll down, you will see various features of the Blossom Feminine Free Theme. But before we go explore them one by one, let's go ahead and explore the demo page. To access the demo page, you will have to click on the live demo button over here. But since I have already opened the demo page, I'm going to start explaining from this page only. So the first thing that you will see is the header section. So over here is our site title, our site tagline. Here are the primary and secondary menus. The Blossom Feminine Free theme allows two menus primary and secondary and you can also see various social media links through which you will be able to link all of your social media pages directly to your website a search bar and a shopping cart for the shop section next is a beautiful slider and you can link various categories or your latest posts over here next is the featured area section so over here you can link various important pages that you don't want your visitors to miss out so this is the home page of the blossom feminine free theme on the left hand side are the blog posts and on the right hand side are the sidebars so let's explore the blog post first so this is how your blog posts are going to look like once you have added the posts and on the top you can also add a sticky post that will stick on the top of your home page such as this one and for your sidebar you can add the author bio section various categories advertisement so adding an advertisement like this you can place your ads and then you can link the advertisement to an image such as this one and make a certain amount of commission for yourself you can also add the recent posts the social media platforms you can also add an instagram widget this is quite fascinating because if your visitors click on this they will be able to see various sample posts that you have created or added in your instagram page and if they click on follow me then this page is going to open in the new tab and this will redirect them to your instagram page and again from over here they will be able to directly connect to you they will be able to directly message you and check out your posts so they can also have a category slider they can also have a newsletter subscription widget various popular posts and another feature is you can also add a newsletter section to your website so using this your users can easily connect to you or they can subscribe for newsletters from you and this is also very important for email marketing this particular feature so come down so here is the Instagram section and you can link your Instagram page directly to your website the Instagram widget that you saw on the sidebar is a widget but on the bottom section you can add your Instagram page directly over here and if they click on follow me again this is going to take them to your Instagram page again and all of your sample posts are going to be shown in the Instagram section over here and 
here is the footer section so this theme allows four different footer areas and you can add various widgets for your footer areas the last section is the footer copyright text so you can edit out certain part of the footer copyright text from over here but the full footer copyright text can only be edited out in the pro version so let's go to the top and we'll explore some pages so let's explore the style guide page and this is how your pages are going to look like and let's go ahead and explore the shop page. Blossom Feminine Free Theme also allows you to have a shop inside of your website. So this is again another way through which you can make some cash for yourself. You can set up a shop of your own and all the merchandise that you want to put out for sale, you can put them out and the visitors on your website can easily buy from you and you wouldn't have to go through the troubles of contacting any third-party websites for you to sell your merchandise and you can easily show your shop section on the navigation menu over here so let's get back so this was the demo page of the blossom feminine free theme now we will go back to our sales page and we will explore the features that come with the blossom feminine free theme as you can see from the screen, Blossom Feminine can be downloaded for absolutely free and it is also rated 5 stars by our wonderful customers. So let's go ahead and explore the features. So the very first thing that you will see is the differences between the free and the pro version side by side and if you go ahead and click on reviews it will take you down to reviews that are left by our users so you can also go through all of them let's go up and after the side by side comparison here are the types of blogs that you can create with the feminine wordpress theme and here are the list of reasons why blossom feminine free wordpress theme is for you so come down and let's explore some more features. So with the Blossom Feminine Free theme, you can easily change the theme color of your website with just a click. And since more than 50% of the Google searches are done on mobile phones, Blossom Feminine is also designed in a way so that automatically adjusts itself to any screen sizes. And we have 600 and plus Google fonts under Blossom Feminine, so you can choose your own fonts. It also has a beautiful Instagram section just the way I showed you in the demo page and also an author bio on the sidebar through which you can easily add your photo and the description and about your website including the social media profiles. So you can also add various social media widgets on your sidebar and you can also add a newsletter section and widget and again this is very important for email marketing so blossom feminine theme is also seo optimized and the theme is developed in such a way that the search engines can easily find your website and rank it above your competitors and search results page so blossom feminine also has an option that allows you to show the last updated date on a single post page and this feature is important for you to rank better in google also, the Blossom Feminine free WordPress theme is speed optimized, which means your website will load faster and your visitors will have a smooth browsing experience. And you can also add advertisement widget, just like the one that I showed you in the demo page. And you can easily make some commission for yourself by placing ads on the sidebars. Next, you have the option to add smooth and attractive slider and you can show up to 20 recent posts or unlimited posts of a category on a slider. You can also easily link your pages to the featured area section and this will help you increase the user engagement on your website. Also, Blossom Feminine WordPress theme allows you to display your social media links on your website so that your visitors can find you on social media. Also, you have a sticky post section through which you can easily pin the post that you want on the top of your homepage. You can also display the related post of the same category. You get three posts or page layouts. You also have the option of post excerpts 
and Blossom Family and WordPress theme also come with extensive theme documentation and through this you can easily follow the step-by-step -step guidelines and your website will be ready in no time. So we also have very friendly and quick support system and if you have any issues regarding the theme or even setting up various customizer settings then you can easily reach out to our support team for their assistance regarding the theme. Since Blossom Themes is WooCommerce compatible, you can easily set up your shop, which gives you more monetization option. It is also widget ready and is cross-browser compatible. And it also has a breadcrumb option that can help your visitors to navigate easily on your website. It also has easy legibility so that your visitors enjoy reading what you have to say. It is also translation ready which means the theme supports localization and you can use the theme in your local language it is also rtl scripts ready and you will also receive updates on a regular basis so you can also easily add your own logo to our website using the blossom feminine theme and along with the custom css you can easily modify or change the colors of a section and blossom theme also supports clean coding which means customization and editing the theme is very easy. And that was it about the features of the Blossom Feminine Free Theme. Now let's go ahead and explore the Blossom Feminine Pro Theme. So to access the Blossom Feminine Pro Theme, you'll have to go to Shop and from Premium Themes, click on Blossom Feminine Pro. I will also leave a link down in the description box below so that you can easily have access to the sales page of the Blossom Feminine Pro theme. All right, let's go ahead and explore the live demo page of the Blossom Feminine Pro theme. So for the Blossom Feminine Pro version, along with every feature that you got with the free theme, you also have many other options to choose from. So you have six different home layouts, you have eight different header layouts, four different slider layouts, five different single post layouts and various pages that you can create. So we will come back and explore some of these extra features. But before that, let's scroll down and take a look at the entire website. So you also have the featured area section and about the layout of featured area section, you have two different layouts that you can easily choose from come down and this is the home page so again let's explore the blog post first and then we will come back to the sidebar widget so with the pro theme you also get to pin the blog post of your choice to the top of the home page such as this one and one extra option that you get is you get to add the social sharing buttons to your blog posts so when your users if they like your post they can easily share it on their social media platforms and especially if you are a newbie it is really important because it increases your exposure twofold so come down and this option is available for all the blog posts that you have in your website or blog so the sidebar option is the same you can easily add various widgets on your sidebar you can also add an advertisement section and you can add recent posts your social media platforms and instagram widget category slider also the newsletter sidebar widget various popular posts and the other option is that you get to make your sidebar widget sticky in the free theme when the sidebar widgets came to an end, you could see an empty section. But with the pro theme, you can make the sidebar sticky so that until and unless your home page comes to an end, the sidebar section will not end. That means it will just stick. All the widgets will just stick to the sidebar. And you also have the newsletter section such as it was in the free theme, a beautiful appealing Instagram section. The footer areas through which you can add the widgets of your choice easily and the bottom section the very bottom section of footer copyright text you have the option to edit the entire footer copyright text with the blossom feminine pro theme so let's go to the top and we will explore some of the header layouts so let's go ahead and explore the header layout number eight 
as you can see the entire look of your website can completely change with the different header layout section chosen and also you must have noticed the sticky header option is also available in the pro theme so that no matter in which part of or which section of the website your visitors are in they can easily go and navigate through the menu and the home page so let's explore some of the home page layouts so currently the sidebar section is showing on the right side and the blog posts are showing on the left side so let's go ahead and explore the home layout number five and as you can see with the home page layout number five you have three more options that is with the right sidebar the left sidebar and the full width sidebar so let's go ahead and explore the left sidebar option and see what it looks like as you can see the sidebar has come to the left and even the appearance of the blog posts look different so in a similar way if you go ahead and choose the full width home page layout then this is how it is going to appear so you can easily the control is in your hands you simply have to click a style and with that one click you can easily change the appearance of your entire website and choose the look of your website as per your preference so it's that easy and now we will go back to the sales page of the blossom feminine pro theme and we will explore the features one by one just like we did before as you can see the blossom feminine pro theme is also rated five stars so come down and here is one of the videos from our youtube channel where one of our customers have left us a review and she also recommends the blossom themes so you can easily check out other videos such as this one in our channel and if you click on reviews again you will see many five stars reviews which are left to us by our absolutely wonderful customers and you can also check all of them out so let's go ahead and explore the features so the very first thing that you will see is the side by side comparison between blossom feminine free and pro theme the types of blogs that you can create with the blossom feminine pro theme and whether or not a blossom feminine pro theme is for you so you can easily go through these to check out whether or not this theme fits as per your preference or not so with the blossom feminine pro theme you get eight different header layouts and you can see the images of what these header layouts look like from over here we have 16 different home page layouts also you can check out the images of each of the home page layouts from over here two different featured area layouts again all of these three options were not available in the free theme but we have them in our pro theme so they are advantage and we also have two sticky post area layouts so you can either choose to display the text outside of the image or you can display it within the image so the choice is yours and we have five single post page distinct layouts you can check out the images from over here again a feature which was not available in our free theme four different pagination layout to choose from so you can either choose default numbered load more button or auto infinite scroll and with the pro theme you can also easily change the theme color and it also easily supports all kinds of mobile devices you can choose from more than 600 plus google fonts and the theme also comes with the pre-built spots for the advertisement so that you can easily monetize your blog and you can also add advertisement widgets we also have appealing instagram section and author bio section just like it was in the free theme so is the widgets and the newsletter section and widgets along with 12 very useful custom widgets that you can use to customize your website and you can check out the widgets from over here so with the pro theme you can also have access to unlimited advanced sidebars so you can choose from any number of sidebars and you can just add the widgets of your choice and display them for various pages in your website it is also seo optimized and it also gives you an option to show the last updated date on the single post page 
It is also speed optimized, has a smooth, attractive and advanced slider, has a featured area section and gives you the option of social media integration, sticky post section and they can also add the related post of the category or the tags. So again, this is another important option that you have with the pro theme. You can also display your popular posts and you can also enable the sticky header just like I showed you in the demo page. And you can also have a sticky widget. Again, both the features were not available in the free theme, but they are in the pro theme. You can also enable the post excerpt and a very significant feature which I have also explained in the demo page is that you can easily edit out the full footer copyright texts. It also has extensive documentation. Again, if you face any sort of problems, then you can easily reach out to our friendly and quick support team. They would be more than happy to help you out. The Pro theme is also WooCommerce compatible. It is also widget ready. It is cross-browser compatible enables breadcrumbs, makes sure that your content is easy on the eye with easy legibility, is translation ready, also RTL scripts ready, and it also helps to easily translate your site into various languages as it is polylang compatible, which means it is multi-language compatible and it is also WPML compatible so you can easily translate your site into multiple languages and easily create a multi-language website. So you will also receive regular updates on a regular basis with the pro theme and you can easily add your custom site logo and also with the pro theme you can easily maintain the pixel of the site logo that you add to your website. So the custom CSS and clean codings you can easily modify some CSS effects or change the color of a section with that and with the clean coding customization and editing the theme is very easy. Let's get up and you can buy the Blossom Feminine Pro theme for the total of $49. If you want to have Blossom Feminine Pro with lifetime updates and support, it costs you $99. And if you want to have the Blossom Feminine Pro with the theme installation and setup service, it costs you $148. And if you want to have Blossom Feminine Pro lifetime updates and support with theme installation and setup service, you can have it for the total of $198. And if you want to know more about how this works, what's included, not included, and what these things are all about, just simply click on this question mark icon over here and you can have access to more information from over here. Now let's go ahead and first of all, let's download the free theme and install and activate it. To install and activate the Blossom Feminine free theme, you can go to the link that I have provided in the description box below or you can also download the theme from your dashboard itself. So for that, just go to appearance and click on themes. So here is the theme that is already showing in default. To install the new theme, you have to click on add new and from the search bar over here, you'll have to search for Blossom Feminine. So just type in Blossom Feminine and because the result is already showing in the search option over here, I'm simply clicking on Blossom Feminine. So let's go ahead and install this. Now that the theme has been installed, let's go ahead and activate it. Alright, so the theme has been activated. Now before we head over to our website and see how it looks like, we have to make sure that we activate the required plugins such as Blossom Themes email newsletter, Blossom Themes social feed, Blossom Themes toolkit and regenerate thumbnails. So these plugins will come in handy when we later have to add on various features to our website. So please do not miss this tip. Just click on begin activating plugins and from over here just click on this little box right on the very top and from the drop down option click on activate and then click on apply. Alright so the required plugins have been installed now let's get back to our dashboard. So this little house icon that I'm hovering my mouse over simply open this link of visit site in a new tab. 
so this is currently how our website looks like it's all empty because we have not added any content to it and before we go ahead and start creating our content let's go back and i'll give you a quick tour of the customizer that we get with blossom feminine free theme so to access the customizer you can directly click on the customize over here or you can also do so by going back to your dashboard and from under appearance from the customize you can also open this link in the new tab and both these options will lead you to your customizer settings so i'm going to quickly cross out this one and let's work on this tab so let's go ahead and explore all of the customizer settings that we get with blossom feminine free theme one by one so the first option that you will see is pro available view pro theme and from here you can view the blossom feminine pro theme next is the demo and documentation so if you click on demo link you can view the demo link and that would also be helpful if you want to take certain references on what widgets to add or where to add your newsletter section or where you should display your instagram settings so you can easily take reference by clicking the demo link over here and the documentation link if you open it so with the help of the blossom feminine documentation you will find various videos that will be helpful to you in configuring your website and you can also see various step-by-step -step procedure through which you can easily follow and configure different parts of your website let's get back and using the site identity you have various options over here through which you can easily configure your header section from colors you have the option to choose the primary and background color of your website from the appearance settings you can change the typography the primary font secondary font and also the font size of your entire website and you can also add header image right above the slider on this section over here with the background image you can easily set a background image for your website so under the general settings here are many different options that you will find and from the slider settings you can either enable or disable the slider you can also choose the slider content style the number of slide also how they are going to appear in terms of animation and transition from the featured area settings you can configure the featured area setting right below your slider section and you can also choose various slider content from the options of feature content one two and three from the social media settings you can enable the social links and you can also add various social links on your header section right over here so with the seo settings you can easily configure various seo settings and from the posts blogs and pages settings it gives you all different options that will help you choose various sidebar layout to enabling and disabling various options and how your blog posts and pages look like in your website so the newsletter section enables you to feature the newsletter section in your website and with Instagram settings you can easily enable the Instagram section or you can easily link your Instagram pages directly to your website right at the bottom with the menus you can easily create a primary and secondary menu blossom feminine free theme supports two menus and if you want to add more menu you can easily do so by adding the menu widget to your sidebar section so from the widget you can create the sidebar widget currently the default sidebars are showing which is also showing in the website over here and also for your information let me tell you that all the customization that you do on the customizer section over here the changes that you make will also reflect on the right side over here in real time 
let's get back and with the footer widgets you can easily configure your footer area this theme allows four different footer areas to your website the next is the home page settings so with the home page settings you have two different options for your home page displays you can either have your latest posts displayed in reverse chronological order or you can have a static page so with the footer settings you can edit out the footer copyright text so you can edit out certain part of the footer copyright text right over here with the free theme you can only edit out certain parts but with the pro theme you can edit out the entire footer copyright text over here so let's get back and with the additional css you can easily customize the appearance and layout of your site by adding your own css codes all right, so that was it about the brief tour of the customizer settings that we get with the Blossom Feminine Free theme. Now we will go ahead and start creating our website and we will start with site identity configuration. All right, so the first option that you will see is you have the option to add a site logo. And the next option you will see is you have a site title and you also have the option to display your site tagline and from here you can either make your site title and tagline appear or disappear so what you can do is if you have added a site logo you can make the site title and tagline disappear but if you have not added the site logo or if you want both the site logo and the site title and tagline to appear you can keep this little box checked so let's go ahead and add a logo first click on select logo and from here you can either drag and drop your files or you can click on select files to upload the files and all the files that you upload over here is going to end up in the media library over here so let's go ahead and select so you have the option to either crop the image or skip cropping so if you want to crop out the image you can easily do so but if you do not want to then you can easily skip this particular step so i'm going to skip cropping and this is how my site logo looks like on my website. So when I have a site logo like this, I can easily make the site title and tagline disappear and only make my site title appear right here in the website. So since I don't want the site logo for now, I'm going to remove this and I'm going to make the site title and tagline reappear or appear in the website. From the site title, you have the option to edit out the title of your website. So if I do not like feminine, I can go ahead and put out the site title of my choice and you can also do so. All you have to do is type in the title of your choice and the changes are going to appear right over here. I'm going to revert it back. So from here, you can easily edit out the tagline and the process is same. You only have to type in the tagline of your choice. So let's go ahead and give our website a tagline. I'm going to go ahead and add a dummy tagline over here. So we have added our tagline and the next option we have is to have a site icon. From the site icon option you have the option to have the site icon of your choice and if you do not know what site icon is it is also known as fabicon by many of you and it is this tiny image that appears next to the name of the website that you have opened uh, you see them in browser tabs and bookmark bars and also within the wordpress mobile apps so this not only helps your users identify your website at a glance, but it also helps in building your brand identity and your brand image. So I highly recommend you to have one. So to have a site icon, you have to simply click on the select site icon option over here, select the image of your choice. And from over here, you can easily crop out your image. If you want to crop the image, you can easily crop it. If you do not want to, then you can also skip cropping. So I'm going to go ahead and crop my image this time. And here it gives you the preview of what the site icon is going to look like on your website or when your users browse your website. Scroll down and you also have the option to change the site title font and you can also change the style of it. 
you can also change the site title font size so you have the option to choose from 600 and plus google fonts so go ahead and explore all the different font family that are available over here and you can choose the one that you like so if you click over here if you select this particular font family then here you can see the changes and you can also choose the style from over here you can either have it normal which is the current display or you can also have the normal 400 italic and the site title will appear in the italic style i'm going to revert it back to how it was before all right so this is what it was before and this is the style that i like so i'm going to stick with this one so from here you can also select the site title font size so if you want a really small site title font size you can do so you can easily slide this blue button under or if you slide it over then you will also have a larger site title font so let's go ahead and increase the size a little bit and you can easily adjust the size as per your preference and also what you want for your website so after you have customized the entire options all the settings that are under site identity do not forget to click on publish now that we have created our site identity and published the changes let's go back and now we will continue with creating the slider section so for the slider section you will have to go to general settings and from under slider settings you will have to enable the slider and choose the slider content style and all the other configuration option that we have over here but since the website is completely empty and even if we go back to our website and refresh it it is not showing anything because we have not added enough content and enough posts into it so we will go back and at first we will create enough content and we will come back and start creating our slider section so let's first of all go back to our dashboard and to create your very first post you'll have to go to the post then click on add new and from here you can add or create your very first blog post i will leave a link in the description box below of a video which includes the in-depth step-by-step tutorial on how you can create your blog post using the gutenberg editor all right so for now you will have to create a blog post you can add the title over here you can add the content over here and from here you can choose the sidebar layout i will not go into this for now i have covered it in the blog post and pages settings so for the time being i have left it out and from the documents you have the option to create and choose categories add new tags and add the featured image so i will go ahead and add a dummy title and some dummy content over here I have added the content over here and to add an image such as this one you can easily click on this plus icon over here select image and you can either upload it or choose from the media library so you can choose the image that you want to add and like this you can add an image so from over here you have the option to choose the categories these are the categories which i have already created but if you want to add a new category you simply have to click on add new category and give it a name for example if you want to name your new category makeup just type in the name and then click on add new category and then it will be added to the list of categories so i'm going to select the categories from over here these are the categories which i have already created so come down and you can also add tags so when you add the relevant tags make sure that you separate the tags with commas or you can simply hit the enter key and you can add the other relevant tags of your choice so you also have the option to set the featured image but if you do not set the featured image it will leave a gray overlay in your website which does not look very flattering so i would recommend you to have a featured image so just click on featured image 
and select the one that you like click on set feature image and after this you can click on publish okay so the post has been published now let's open this link in the new tab and this is how it looks like so let's go to our home page and as you can see the very first post that i have created has ended up in the slider section over here which can be configured later on but before that let me pause the video for a while and i will go back and add few more posts and then we can continue on with the video as you can see from the screen i have added few more posts so let's head back to our customizer and start creating our slider section but before that let's go to our website and refresh it if you have not already so if you come down and take a look this is how our website looks like with all the posts added to it and as you can see the latest posts have ended up in the slider section over here so we will go ahead and configure that so let's go to our customizer and go to general settings then go to slider settings and from here you have to enable this toggle if you have not already enabled it and from underneath you have the option to select the slider content style so click over here and you can either choose latest post or the category the default slider content style is the latest post so we will go ahead and select category instead of that and from the slider category option we have to choose the category of our choice so let's go ahead and select design so all the blog posts that are under the design category are going to be displayed in the slider section over here if you wish to have anything other than the design category you can go ahead and choose the category of your choice so from this option if you disable the slider auto then it will disable the slider auto transition so you'll have to or your users will have to click on these arrows for them to be able to access the next slider but if you enable this the slider auto transition will be enabled and from the slider animation you can choose a various slider animation style so if you choose slide out right it is going to slide out to the right and in a similar fashion if you choose fade out down it's going to fade out to down so you can explore all the different options that are available over here and i'm going to stick with fade out right okay so after all the change made let's go ahead and publish this okay so let's go to our website and refresh this and this is how our website looks like after we have configured our slider section and here are the sliders of your choice so before we go ahead if you go ahead and open one of the posts then you can see if you take a look at the link over here it looks weird with date and everything showing so let's go ahead and see how we can fix our permalink so for that we'll have to go back to our dashboard and from the settings go to permalinks so the current option is day and name instead of that you have to choose post name now click on save changes and if you go back and just go to the home page first and then you click on that post and as you can see the problem has been fixed and it is the same for all the other posts that you have created so if you want to go ahead further and if you want to fix the URL slug you can also do so so for that you have to go back again to a dashboard and go to all posts and you just note down or remember the title then go back and click on edit so here you have the option to fix the url slug and if you want to know more about the url slug and permalinks you can also click on this link so if i want to edit the last parts of my permalink I'm going to delete that and I'm going to click on update so if I go ahead and view this post you can see the permalink has been fixed and the last 
two words that I did not want to appear has also disappeared. So this is how you can fix your permalink and URL slug. Let's cross it out. Let's move on with our customizer setting. All right, so the slider section has been configured. Now we will go ahead and create a navigation menu. To create the navigation menu or navigation menus, you will have to go back to the menus option, click over here and over here you have the option to create new menu. So the Blossom Feminine Free theme supports the primary and secondary menu. So for now, all you have to do is click on create new menu. And from over here, you will have to give your menu a name. I'm going to name my menu primary menu. From the menu locations, you have to select where do you want this menu to appear. So if you select on primary, your menu is going to appear right over here above the slider. And if you click on secondary, then your menu is going to appear right on the top bar. So for now, let's select primary and click on next. Now you'll have to go ahead and click on add items. So from here, you can select the items that you want to display on your primary menu. And also on in-depth detail about how you can create or configure the menu for your website, I will leave a link in the description box below. And with the help of that video, you can go in detail about how you can completely create a menu or configure the menu section of your website. So go ahead and select the items that you want for your primary menu. I'm going to select all of the category and from the custom links i'm going to add the link to my home page so what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to copy and paste the link to my home page and in the link text i'm going to add home and then click on add to menu so from here you also have the option to sort and order your menu i'm going to drag home all the way to the top and you can also do that with the other items i'm going to put style or design on the second so let's go ahead and publish this and as you can see the menu has appeared in the primary menu location over here let's go ahead and create one more menu the secondary menu so from here you have to again the process is same click on create new menu and give your menu a name. I'm going to name mine secondary menu. So select the menu location to secondary, click on next. And again, you have to add items just the way you add it in your primary menu. So you can also sort and order your secondary menu just like you did with your primary menu and then click on publish. And as you can see, the secondary menu has also appeared on the top bar over here. So this is how you can create the primary and secondary menu. All right, now let's get back. Now we will go ahead and add various social media links to our header section right over here. So for that, you'll have to go to general settings, click on social media settings. And if this toggle is not already enabled, you have to make sure that you enable this one and you can start adding new links by clicking on add new links. So what you have to do is from search icons, you have to search for the social media platform of your choice. So just enter the few keywords and the social media that you want, the icon of that social media platform will appear over here. So for example, if I want to add Facebook, I simply have to add in a few keyword and here the icon has appeared click on this and on the link section over here you will have to add the link to your facebook page over here so i'm going to link the blossom themes facebook page over here you can simply copy and paste the link or you can also type in just like i'm doing right now And as you can see, the Facebook icon has appeared on the top over here. So let's go ahead and add a few more links. Let's go ahead and add Instagram. 
the icon has appeared and now add the link to your Instagram page on the link box and now the Instagram icon has appeared over here let's go ahead and add three more social links in a similar way after you have added the social media links make sure you click on publish so now let's go over to our website and go to our home page and here the social media links have appeared so what happens is when you link your various pages to your websites like this then when your users visit your website they can easily access to your various social media profiles if they simply click on the icons over here so for example if they want to access your pinterest page they can simply open this then just like this they can have access to your pinterest page just like it is showing on the screen over here cross it out let's go back to our customizer and let's go back so next we will go ahead and add the featured area section right below our slider section over here so for that you'll have to click on featured area settings and the first thing to do would be to enable the featured area by enabling the toggle over here and after that you will have the option to choose the featured area content 1, 2 and 3. So you simply have to select one of the pages from the drop down option over here. Since we have not created any pages yet the options are not showing so we will have to head over to our dashboard and again create few pages. So let's go back and the process of creating pages is the same just like we created posts all you have to do is from the pages option over here click on add new so all you have to do is click on the title and then add the content then you can also select the sidebar layout again the sidebar layout configuration i will come back to it when i am explaining the post blogs and pages settings along with the post sidebar layout so i'm going to leave this one out for now and from the document over here you can easily choose the featured image and for creating pages you do not have to add any category just like you did while creating your posts so let's go ahead and add a title and then you can go ahead and add the content over here you can also add an image so you can either upload it or you can choose from the media library so the image has appeared now from the document option go ahead and select the featured image again if you do not choose the featured image on your website a gray overlay will show which will not look very good so it is highly recommended for you to have a featured image i will select this one and then you have to click on publish and if you go ahead and view the page this is how it is going to look like so let me pause the video for a while and i will go back and create a few more pages and then we can continue with the video i have added three more pages so let's go back to our customizer so let's go ahead and choose the feature content one two and three from the drop down option so i'm going to choose design for my content one editorial for my content two and style for my content three so scroll down and all three featured areas have appeared in our website so let's go ahead and publish this and go to our website and refresh this and let's see how our website looks like now and as you can see the featured area section is showing on our website and this area is quite important because you can directly link in the pages that you do not want your visitors or users to miss out when they visit your website so you can easily link in the pages that you want in your featured area section over here now let's go ahead and continue with our customizer let's go back and we had already covered the site identity now let's go ahead with the colors so click on the colors option over here and with the free theme you get to choose the primary and the background color of your website so primary color is the color that you see when i'm hovering my mouse over 
this light pink color that you are seeing is the primary color of your website and the background color is white that is shown in default so let's see how we can change that so to change the primary color click on select color and then you can choose from the palette over here so you can simply select the palette that you want and then you can easily slide over the slider and also this pointer to come to the color of your choice so you can go ahead and choose blue if you want if you like blue you can choose pink if you like pink and you can also choose red if you like red and if you do not like the color and you want to revert it back simply click on default and the default color will show over here I would like to go with the default the slight color over here but you can go ahead and change and select the color if you want to so for the background color the process is same you simply have to select color select the palette and move over this pointer and the slider to choose the color of your choice so if you want to go with darker color you can also go with the darker shade if you want something light then you can also do that and if you do not like it again the process is same you can click on default and then the website background color will revert back to default and after all the changes make sure that you click on publish let's go back and check out what we have under appearance settings so from under appearance you have three different options the first one is typography and from the typography you can change the primary and the secondary font style of the site and you can also change the font size of your site so if you go ahead and change the primary font to something else as you can see the changes are already showing over here and if you go ahead and change the secondary font the secondary font of the website is also going to change and again because we have more than 600 plus Google fonts to choose from you can easily select the font of your preference so with the font size you can change the font size so if you want the font size to be really big it can be big and if you want it to be really small or just a medium size the way I prefer then you can also have it that way all right so I'm going to go ahead and change it back to the fonts that it was before and for the font size let's decrease the size a little bit I think 17 would do so again you have to click on publish if you have made any changes and i'm putting an emphasis to hitting on the publish button as soon as you have made any changes because if you do not then the changes that you have made will not be saved so let's get back and see what we have under header image so you also have an option to add a header image right above your slider section and if you take a look over here the recommended image size is also given so to add the image you have to click on add new image and go ahead and select the image of your choice I'm going to select this one so you can also crop it or you can also skip cropping I'm going to skip cropping and here right above the slider section above the navigation menu the header image has appeared and if you do not like it you can go ahead and hide the image or if you want some other image then you can also add some other image of your choice I'm going to hide the image okay so let's get back and you also have the option to add the background image to your website so if you go ahead and select let's go ahead with the same image so if you add the background image that particular image will be set as your background as you can see in the screen and underneath you can see various configuration options so if you go with default the default setting is going to be applied if you choose fill screen 
then this is how it is going to look like. If you choose fit to screen, then the image is going to be fit to screen. And if you choose repeat, the image is going to repeat. So if you choose custom, then you can choose the image size from original to fit to screen and fill screen. And you also have two more options that is whether or not to repeat the background image or scroll with page. So you can go ahead and uncheck these options or check in the choices yours. And also if you choose one of the options from preset, you also have the option to position the image as per your desire with the image position option that is given over here. So if you click on these arrows over here, it is going to change or it is going to set the image position of the image that you have added as the background image. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this because I like the classic white background. So let's get back. And from under the general settings, we have already covered the slider settings and we have also covered the feature area and the social media settings. So let's go ahead and see what we have under SEO settings. So you have the option to enable the last updated post date and also enable the breadcrumb in your inner pages. So let's go ahead and open this post. So if you enable the last updated post date, the last updated post date is going to show on your blog post and it is also very important for your Google SEO ranking and you also have the option to enable the breadcrumb. So this is what the breadcrumb is. So if you go ahead and disable this option, the breadcrumb is not going to show anymore. But I would recommend you to enable the breadcrumb because it helps in SEO ranking and also navigation easier within your website. So you also have the option to choose the breadcrumb home text. So if you do not like home and you want something else, it is going to appear that way. I'm going to revert it back to home. And you also have the option to make the breadcrumb separator appear or disappear. So if you remove this, the breadcrumb separator is not going to be shown anymore. But I would recommend you to have the breadcrumb separator. All right, so let's get back and we will dive into our post blogs and pages settings. So from this setting over here, you can choose the page sidebar layout and the post sidebar layout. So what happens is you can select the default sidebar layout or one of the sidebar layout from the options that are provided over here. So if you go ahead and see the posts, you open these posts and if you see then you will see that all of these posts have the right sidebar because currently the default sidebar is the right sidebar. But if you want to have the left sidebar for all the posts, you simply have to select the sidebar layout from over here and click on publish. And if you go ahead and refresh all of these posts with the right sidebar, you can see the sidebar has changed, the right sidebar has changed to the left sidebar. And you can also go ahead. So in a similar way, you can also choose the full width center sidebar layout for your blog posts. And if you choose this and click on publish, all the posts, all the blog posts that you have published in your website is going to have full width centered layout to them by default. So here, all of these posts have full width centered layout to it. I'm going to change it back to right sidebar layout and publish this. So from the customizer setting over here, you can choose the default sidebar layout for all of your posts. So let's say for example, if you want a specific post or if you want to add a new post and you want a different sidebar layout for that post, you can also do that. And that is the cool thing about the layout settings. 
because if you want to have all the blog posts in the same layout, you can choose the default sidebar layout from the customizer settings over here. But if you have, let's say, 20 different blog posts in your website and you want each of them to have a different sidebar layout, you can also do so. And how you can have a different sidebar layout for your blog post, I will show you how you can do that. So currently, this blog post has the right sidebar layout. But if I want to have the left sidebar layout or full width center layout for this specific post, so let's see how we can do this. For that, let's get back to our dashboard. And from post, go to all posts and search for the post that you want to. Click on edit. And from this option, the sidebar layout option, which I had left out when we created the post, all you have to do is select the sidebar layout from three other options that you have over here so go ahead and select the full width sidebar layout if you want that or you can also choose from the left or the right sidebar okay you do not have to select from the right sidebar because that is the default sidebar that we had selected from the customizer you have to go ahead and click on update and now let's go to this post and refresh it and as you can see the blog post is appear in full width. So this is how you can have a different sidebar layout for each of your posts. And you can also do that when you are creating a new post. And setting the page sidebar layout is exactly the same as selecting the post sidebar layout. For you to have a default or one sidebar layout for all of your pages, you can come to the customizer and select from one of the three options that are provided over here. But if you want to have a different sidebar layout for one of your page, then you can go back to that specific page and select a different sidebar layout for that specific page from the bottom from the sidebar layout option that is shown right at the bottom just the way it was showing while i configured the post sidebar layout so the process is same you can follow the similar process or if you want to have a different page sidebar layout you can also choose that at the time of creation of the page itself so that was it about the page and the post sidebar layout come down and the next option you have is to enable the blog excerpt so the blog excerpt is the summary of your blog post and if you enable this only the excerpt is going to show but if you disable this the entire blog post is going to be shown so let's enable this so that only the excerpt is showing and you also have the option to choose the excerpt length in words so if you go ahead and choose 50, only 50 words are going to be displayed in your excerpt length. If you want to change the read more text, you can change it from over here. So if you want to change it from read more to something else, you can remove it. And you can type anything that you want and the changes will be shown over here. I'm going to revert it back to read more. So with show related posts, it enables you to show the related posts in a single page. So if you go ahead and open this single post over here, if you enable the show related post, then the related post is going to show over here. And along with the related post, you can also change the related post section title from you may also like to something else. And the next option is you can enable to hide the comments. So if you turn this toggle on, then the comment section is not going to be shown anymore. And for you to disable the hide comment section, you have to toggle this button off and publish it. Go back to the website and reload it to enable the comment section again. So if you hide the category, all the categories that were showing on these blog posts are going to disappear but i would recommend you to show the category so if you go ahead and hide the author the author section is going to be hidden and if you hide the posted date the posted date is going to be hidden 
and with the show featured image if you disable this the featured image is not going to show anymore and if you hide the prefix in the archive page so let's just say you go to the category runway page and if you disable the prefix the prefix is going to be hidden okay so again after all the changes you have made do not forget to click on publish let's go back to our home page and that was it about the posts blogs and pages settings now we will go back let's see how we can configure our newsletter settings all right so before we go ahead and start with the configuration settings that are provided here in the newsletter settings we will have to go back to our dashboard to create a newsletter so let's go back to our dashboard so from your dashboard go to blossom themes email newsletter and click on add new so from here you will have to configure the basic settings so over here let's start with adding title to our newsletter so from the fill settings you have to select which fields will show in your newsletter if you select name and email both name and email placeholders are going to be shown in your newsletter but if you only select email only the email placeholder is going to be shown i'm going to go ahead and choose name and email and after that you can also change the label or the title inside of the name and email placeholder as well as the submit button label and over here you can add a short message asking your users or visitors to subscribe from you so i'm going to go ahead and write a note all right so after you have done this go to appearance settings and you have the option to choose either the background color or the background image for your newsletter so if you choose the background color you have to click over here and from the palette down just choose the color option and simply use both the pointer and the slider to select the color of your choice and from over here you can choose the font color but instead of that instead of the background color if you want to select a background image then you can also do that so from here you have to upload the image of your choice and you have to enable the overlay on background and let's choose the font color to black and now click on publish okay so before we go back to our customizer let's go ahead and copy the short code because we will need to add it when we go back to our customizer so let's go back and enable the newsletter section if you have not already enabled it and then you go ahead and paste the newsletter short code we had copied while creating our newsletter so after this let's go ahead and click on publish so your newsletter section is already showing over here as you can see the color is not contrasting with the image that we have selected so let's go back to our dashboard and select a lighter color for our font style let's go ahead and choose white and click on update and now from the customizer let's just quickly disable and enable it to see the changes and here you can see the font color has been changed to something lighter and it contrasts well with the image that we have added as background for our newsletter and after all the changes that we have made let's go ahead and click on publish so that the changes are saved and also about in-depth tutorial of creating a newsletter i will leave a link down in the description box below for you to check out so you can refer to that video for in-depth understanding of how you can create a newsletter so let's get back and okay before we go back to our instagram settings let's go to our website and reload it and see how it looks like after we have added the newsletter to it okay so here this is how our website looks like with newsletter added to it let's go to the top and now 
let's go back and we will go to our instagram settings okay so first of all let's go ahead and enable our instagram section and after that you will have to click over here i'm going to open this in the new tab and it will take you to the page through which you can configure and add the instagram section in your website I have also added a link to the video that will give you a step-by-step -step and in-depth tutorial about how you can easily set up the Instagram section in your website using Blossom Theme social feed. And the video also includes answers to various issues that you might face while trying to connect your Instagram section with your website. So let's go ahead and connect our Instagram section to our website from over here. So go ahead and click on connect with Instagram. And after you have clicked on that button, it will take you to the page where it will ask you for your login credentials. You have to fill that in because I have already linked the Blossom Themes Instagram with other websites. It is currently showing the message such as this one. I'm going to go ahead and click on continue, but you will have to add in your login credentials. All right. So after you have logged in, you will see the access token is automatically fetched so is your username and from down over here you will see other options such as how many numbers of photos to display or the photos per row and also the profile link text and also the option to check for new posts every day so if you go ahead and choose the number of days then it will fetch new posts as per the number of days that you have selected from over here all right, I'm going to quickly change the number of photos to six. And after checking all these options, please don't forget to click on save changes. So after you have clicked on save changes, you will see that the connect with Instagram button has changed to reconnect with Instagram. That means the configuration has happened successfully. Now let's go back to our customizer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly disable and enable this option just as a way of refreshing the customizer and as you can see the Instagram section has appeared over here but let's get back to our website and let's okay before that let's publish this and go to our website and refresh it and scroll all the way down to the bottom and as you can see the instagram section has been enabled so currently the six posts are showing because i had selected six posts but if you want to go ahead and select more number of posts you can go back and choose the number of posts and if your visitors click on this follow me button over here then it will take them to your instagram page and from here they can check out your work your posts and basically what your page is all about and what you do and they can also directly follow you and directly message you from over here so i'm going to go back quickly and change the number to five and then we will continue with other settings all right so i'm going to click on publish and reload the website and only five instagram posts are showing and this is looking better than it was before all right so this is how you configure your instagram settings i'm going to quickly cross out these tabs and let's go work on our customizer now let's go back okay so that was it about the instagram settings but before we get back with our other customizer settings i will show you how you can create your own shop using the blossom feminine free theme so for that go to dashboard and go to plugins so go ahead and activate this all right so the woocommerce has been activated now let's go to our dashboard and you will see the woocommerce option over here so if you go to our customizer and refresh it and go to general settings once again you will see one more option of shop settings so let's go back and to create the shop section you will first of all have to add the products so to add the products in your website let's go ahead and click on products and then click on add new 
so from here you can add the new product i will not go into the details of this but you can go ahead and add a product name over here you can add the description you can set the price over here and you can create and add categories from over here and you can also use the product tags from here you can set the product image and from here you can set the product gallery so for the first product let me just show you how you can create a product and then you can add a short description set the price so from over here you can add the product categories so let's go ahead and add the categories and you can see the clothes categories have been added and in a similar way you can add more categories so you can also go ahead and add product tags just make sure that you separate the tags with commas or click on enter after you have added the relevant tags so let's go ahead and set the product image all right so after you have added the product just click on publish and you can see the product has been published if you open the link then you will see your product is published in your website so before we carry on with our video just let me go back and add a few more products and then we will carry on with our customizer settings as you can see from the screen i have added more products now we will have to go back to the dashboard and from pages we will have to create three more pages so i'm going to click on add new open the link in the new tab and i'm also going to duplicate these tabs so that it would be easier for us to create the relevant pages so the first page that you'll have to create is of shop so you simply type in shop in the title and publish the page the next page you'll have to create is that of cart and over here you'll have to add in the woocommerce short code for cart and the woocommerce short code for cart is woocommerce underscore cart okay so go ahead and publish this and the last page that you'll have to create is the checkout page so type in checkout and over here you have to type in the short code the short code is woocommerce underscore checkout so go ahead and publish it now that the pages have been created go back to the dashboard and from here from woocommerce go to settings go to products and over here you have to assign the shop page which you had created click on save changes and then go to advanced so to the cart page you have to assign the cart page to the checkout page you have to assign the checkout page and from here just click on save changes so after this go to appearance click on menus and from here you will have to assign these pages to the menu over here so just click on three and click on add to menu so this is another way through which you can create a menu or add items to your menus so i'm going to put shop over here and these pages i'm going to put it out as the shop item so what you have to do is you have to simply slightly drag them to the right just like this okay so now click on save menu and now go to your website and reload it as you can see the shop page has been created along with the cart and checkout as the sub pages under shop and you must have also noticed the small cart that is showing over here now let's return to our customizer and from the shop settings okay so if you have not already enabled this just make sure that you enable this and now if you go to the shop section you can see all the products that we have created so this is how you can create shop section easily using the blossom feminine free theme so just click on publish after you have made all the changes 
let's just go back so that was it about the shop settings and we are also done with our general settings so let's get back to our home page and again scroll all the way to the bottom and let's get back and the menu section we have already covered it let's go back so the other option we have is to configure the widgets and from over here you can easily configure your sidebar and the footer widgets so before we go to our sidebar widget configuration or customization we will go ahead and configure all four of our footer sections starting with footer one so let's go ahead and add a widget to our footer number one and you can select from all the available footer widgets over here you can also search for widgets from over here so the first widget i would like to add is okay let's go ahead and add an arbitrary text so let's go ahead and give it a title i'm going to name it feminine and the title has appeared over here so i'm going to go ahead and add some dummy text and the text has appeared over here all right so let's go ahead and click on done and footer one has appeared so let's get back and add footer number two click on add a widget and for this one let's go ahead and add the blossom popular post okay so it has already arrived over here so you can go ahead and change the title if you want to change the title you can also change the number of posts from over here you can change the popular based on either post views or comment count and you can also change the layout from style 1 2 and 3 so currently it is style 1 let's go ahead and see what style 2 has right. so this is what style number 2 looks like and for style number 3 okay this is how it looks like so if we go ahead and show the post thumbnail this is how it is going to show i'm going to go ahead and stick with style number one okay this looks better and we also have the option to show the post date and also the option for our visitors to open these posts on the new tab if they click on one so after this let's click on done now let's get back and for our footer number three let's go ahead and add a list of drop down categories so the title is already showing and i'm not going to make any changes to it and from here we have other options so we have the option to display as drop downs we have the option to show post counts and we also have the option to show hierarchy so i liked the way it was displaying initially better just like this one so i'm going to choose this style and then click on done okay so for our footer number four let's go ahead and add let's see what we can add all right let's go ahead and add a gallery so over here let's type in the title gallery and from over here let's go ahead and add images so you can choose the images that you want to display in your gallery. And from here, you can also reverse the order. And as you can see, the gallery has arrived over here. So click on done and click on publish. Okay, so let's again get back to our website, refresh this and go all the way to the bottom to see what our footer section looks like and this is how it looks like so you can always go back and choose the widgets of your choice you do not have to go with the choices i have chosen so next we will go ahead and edit out the footer copyright text so for that again let's go back to our customizer and from the footer settings you can change the footer copyright text okay so with the free theme you can only edit out certain part of the footer copyright text so you can only edit out this portion so let's just say that you do not want 2020 copyright feminine and instead of this you want only let's say feminine so go over here and type in the text that you want to display and here you can see it has appeared over here 
So like this, you can change or edit out the certain part of your photo copyright text with Blossom Feminine Free Theme. I'm going to change it back to what it was before. And now after all the changes made, go ahead and publish it. Okay, so now again, we will go to the widgets and we have finished configuring the footer area. Now we will go ahead and configure the sidebar section. So the sidebar area that is showing over here, it was here in default. So I'm going to quickly remove all of this first. Okay, so now the sidebar area is clear for us to start adding the widgets of our choice. So the first widget that I would like to add is the author bio section. So to add the author bio section, let's go ahead and click on add a widget. And from here, so let's go ahead and search for the Blossom author bio. You can also simply search from over here. I have already found the author bio section. So here, your author bio section will be displayed and over here you can make the changes in title and author name and everything. So let's go ahead and add in the information and I'm going to add Sarah Baker just as an example. Okay, so the name is displayed and from over here you can add your author email. So here you can add a short description about yourself and from over here you can display the signature form. You can either write in or you can have the signature displayed in text or you can also upload an image if you have already created a graphic of your signature okay since i had the graphic of the signature image i'm adding it over here and from here you can choose the button label and also the button link and you also have the option to open it in the new tab Okay, so before we go ahead and add various social media profiles, let's go ahead and add in a short description in the author bio section. And let's also upload a photo. You can upload a photo from Gravatar or you can also upload your own picture from over here. I'm going to add this image just as an example. All right, so the image has appeared over here and come down you have the option to add the social media profiles so over here you can add your personal social media profile through which your users will be able to contact with you directly so the social media icons you have added over here you can link it to the pages that you have created and underneath your author bio section you can link your personal social media pages or just those profiles which you have created to interact with your followers or your visitors and the users of your website. So the process is same. You only have to search for the icon from over here. And after you have selected the platform, you will have to add the link to your social media handle over here. So in this way, you can add various social media profiles of your choice. Let's go ahead and add more. So after this, you click on apply and the social media links have appeared over here and then you click on done and now click on publish. All right. So the author bio section has appeared on your sidebar. Now, in a similar way, we can add more widgets to our sidebar. It's completely empty right now so that we can add the sidebar widgets of our choice from the list of available widgets. So let's go ahead and add a few more. And let's add an advertisement widget. So let's give it a title advertisement. So you can either display the advertisement from ad code or you can also upload a photo and you can link that picture to the advertisement page. So let's go ahead and click on upload and you can select an image such as this one and you will have to add the featured link, the link that your users or visitors will land on when they click on this image over here. So you also have the option to open the ad in the same tab. I have just added 
a dummy link so after you have added the link you have to click on done and the advertisement widget is showing on your website site so in a similar way you can also add other various widgets such as okay you can also add categories and the categories will display over here so you can change the title you can also choose various display options from over here and then you can also add an instagram widget let's go ahead and add an instagram widget okay so here it is and as you can see the instagram section that was showing at the bottom is also showing on our sidebar over here and you can also change the number of photos from here directly for your widget so this is how it is going to display click on done you can add others from the list of available widgets over here so let's go ahead and add popular posts so this is how it is going to show and and you can also choose various options from over here and then you have to click on done so this is how you can add various sidebar widgets using the sidebar customizer you can go ahead and explore many other widgets from the list of available widgets over here and after all the changes that you have made again click on publish and now let's go back okay so we are done with the widgets customizer settings again let's head over to our website reload it and now let's go to the top and see how it looks like with the sidebar widgets added to it so this is how our sidebar widget looks like in our website okay so let's get back and next we have is the home page settings so you have the option to choose your latest posts to be displayed in your home page or you can also choose a static page so currently the default setting is to show the latest post on our home page displays which is showing over here but if you want to go ahead and choose a static page you can also do so and after you have chosen a static page for the home page you have to select one of the pages that you have created or you can also go ahead and add a new page so i'm going to go ahead and select from one of the pages that i have already created so this page is going to serve as my home page but you must be wondering where all the other posts that you have created will display or how your users can have direct access to all the posts that you have created if you choose to have a static page displayed in your home page so for that from the post page you can select from one of the pages that you have created or you can go ahead and click on add a new page and give your new page a title so after this you click on add and all the posts that you have created will show under this page so to let your users have an easy access to to all of the posts that you have created which are currently stored under the blog posts page what you can do is you can go back and you can add the blog post page to either the primary or the secondary menu so if you go ahead and add the blog post page to your primary menu and publish it so it is going to show with other navigation menu in the primary menu area over here so when your users go to the website just refresh it if you have not refreshed already i have already refreshed it so if your users come over to a website and if they see a static home page such as this one to access the blog post they will have to click over here and from under the blog post page they will have access to all the blog posts that you have created okay i'm going to go back and i'm going to revert the home page settings to the latest posts because i like it that way let's click on home click on publish and i'm going to reload okay so this is how you can do it and i'm also going to quickly remove the blog post page from my primary menu 
okay so click on publish let's get back so after we have completed the home page settings next is the footer settings and we have already covered this while we had created or configured our footer area so i'll not go into it and the last option that we have the last setting remaining that we have is the additional css so with the additional css you can add your own css code here and you can customize the appearance and the layout of your site you simply have to add the css code over here all right so that was it about the blossom feminine free theme now i will go ahead and install and activate the blossom feminine pro theme and i'll show you how you can easily migrate from the free theme to pro theme without losing any of your datas and how you can configure your website using the new customizer settings that you get with the blossom feminine pro theme to download the blossom feminine pro theme go to our website blossomthemes.com again and from the shop section from premium themes go to blossom feminine pro i have also left a link in the description box so that you can easily click on that and have access to this page so all you have to do is click on get it now after you have selected from one of the options of products or services that are available over here click on get it now and from this page over here you have to add in your email address your first name your last name and check out the price over here and then click on proceed to payment after making the respective payment you will get the theme in your email address as a zip file since i have already downloaded the pro theme i will go ahead and start installing and activating the pro theme to install the blossom feminine pro theme go back to your dashboard and from under the appearance click on themes so click on add new and then click on upload theme so the zip file that you get you'll have to add a drag and drop or you can also choose the file and open it like this so click on install now and the blossom feminine pro theme has been installed now click on activate so after you have installed and activated the blossom feminine pro theme you will be redirected to the getting started with blossom feminine pro page so from over here from free plugins you can go ahead and activate the free plugins if you have already not activated them so after this what you have to do is you have to go ahead and enter your blossom feminine pro license and you can find the license in the download section of your blossom themes dashboard or you also find it with the purchase details of your blossom feminine pro theme so what you have to do is you have to enter the license key in this box over here and then click on activate license after you activate your license the short message of your license being activated will be shown at the bottom and after you have activated the license you will get all the updates with just a click so let's go ahead and add the license key and click on activate license all right now let's go to our website and reload it so let's go ahead and view all the different features or the extra features that we get after we have updated or after we have installed and activated the blossom feminine pro theme so let's scroll down and as you can see the slider section and the featured area section looks pretty much the same and so does our blog posts but if you see over here we have the option to add various social media platforms or various social media icons through the share button over here which your users can make use of if they want to share the blog posts that you have created so it is available for all the other blog posts so that's the difference all right so for now the website looks pretty much the same but let's go back to our customizer and let's find out more so let's go to our dashboard and from the appearance again let's click on customize and i'm going to cross out this customizer setting 
all right so just by looking you can already tell that there are many more options that we get with our blossom feminine pro theme and the very first difference that we see is that we have a search bar over here because of the free plugin we activated so from over here we can easily search for various customizer settings without having to scroll all the way to the bottom so for example if i want to search for social media so after entering just a few keywords all the relevant customizers to social media will be shown over here so you can easily make use of that it makes our work even more convenient so let's go ahead and right away start exploring all the customizers that we get with our pro theme and let's dive into site identity first let's start with this one so as you can see the option of adding a site logo site title tagline is pretty much the same but one extra option that you see is you can set the width or pixel of your site logo with the pro theme so if you go ahead and add a logo of your own and after you have added in the logo what you can do is from over here you can set the width or the pixel of your site logo so instead of 150 if you want a bigger site logo you can simply go ahead and type in the width of your choice and as you can see the site logo is displaying in bigger size so if you go ahead and make the site title and tagline disappear this is how your site logo is going to look like okay so let me revert it and having the site icon option the site title font and style as well as the site title font size is the same so i will not go into this let's go back and the next option that we get is the child theme support settings and this feature is something that we did not have in our blossom feminine free theme so from here you can select various child theme style and for those of you who do not know what child theme is it is basically a theme that is useful for you to change various you know just make subtle settings to your website without losing any of the features that you have derived from your parent site so let's go ahead and see what changes or what theme styles that we get under child theme style so here are four different theme style that we get so if you go ahead and select blossom chic you can see the font style and the colors the primary and secondary colors have changed and if you go ahead and choose blossom diva then you can see the style has changed again and so has the colors if you go ahead and choose blossom beauty the style will change accordingly to this very subtle mint green color and also here are variations in the primary and the secondary colors and finally if you go ahead and choose blossom mommy blog the changes have been made to this nice beautiful green color and also the changes are seen in our blog posts so for now i'm just going to go back to our default style and then if i want to make certain changes in my theme style i can always come back and choose from one of the child theme styles okay so let's get back and let's see what colors options we have so in the free theme we only had primary and the background color with the pro theme we have three different color options so first option is the button background color with this we can change the color of various buttons that we have over here so the process is same you only have to select the color or the palette and select the color of your choice and you will see the changes will be shown over here and you also have the option to change your header background color so if you go ahead and choose 
a lighter color then it will be displayed accordingly so you can go ahead and play with the colors and select the color of your choice and another the last color option that you get is the photo background color so with this you can change your photo background color currently it is black but if you want it to be some colorful color or something which is colorful but is light then you can also go ahead and choose that just like i'm showing in the screen over here so let's put it back to default and even for header i'm going to set it back to the dark color like it was before but if you have made any changes again do not forget to click on publish let's get back the next option that we get is that of layout settings so under the free theme we only had one header layout but over here we have eight different header layouts to choose from so you can go ahead and select the one that you like simply scroll down and play with the options over here and you can go ahead and set the one that you like the most i'm going to stick with the older header for the time being and again after the changes do not forget to click on publish and i'm saying it time and again because most of the times we forget to click on publish and the changes just remain unsaved so i don't want that to happen to you uh, which is why i'm putting an emphasis to click on publish so let's go ahead and check what slider layout options we have and here we have four different slider layout options and you can choose from the one that you like you can go ahead and choose the slider to be this way if you want to or you can choose the third option which is to show a slider like this you can choose the second option or you can always go with the first one i'm going to go ahead and choose the third option this time okay so let's go ahead and click on publish now let's get back and let's see what featured area layout we have so in our free theme we only had one featured area layout but here we have one more to choose from so if you go ahead and choose this this is how your featured area section is going to look like so as you can see with just by updating in the pro theme the overall look of the website can be completely changed it's all up to your preference if you want to have it this way you can have it this way and if you want to have it another way you can also have it another way so let's go ahead and choose the second one and click on publish now let's go ahead and see the sticky post layout okay so before i get into this there's one more thing i would like to show you so the sticky post if you want any of your blog posts to be shown on top of your home page so let's just say you want this particular post to stick on top of your home page all you have to do is just go back to the dashboard and you'll have to remember the post name and then go to post all posts and click on edit so if you go ahead and on your right hand side this little box over here stick to the top of the blog option if you check into this and click on update go ahead and reload your website so this particular post is going to stick on top of your home page like the way it is showing right now so let's go ahead and okay so upon returning to the customizer if you do not find the changes over here just reload the customizer and you will be able to see the changes just the way it is showing over here so from the sticky post layout you can choose from two of these options so you can also select from this one and as you can see this is how you can change the sticky post layout for your sticky post so you can choose from two of these options over here from the option one the text will be shown outside with excerpts and everything and if you choose the option two the text and all the excerpts and everything is just going to be embedded into it so this is how you can choose the sticky post layout let's get back and see what home page layout we have so we have many different home page layouts we can choose from so you can change the layout of your home page from one of the options over here so if you do not want the sidebar to be shown 
and if you want to go ahead and select a layout with no sidebar then this is how your home page is going to look like see how different it is and if you want something like this then that option is also available so go ahead and select from one of the options that you like and you will see the change happening in real time over here and according to your taste and preference and also the uniqueness of your website you can choose the one that you like i'm going to stick with the first option that we had since i like it that way and you can choose the one that you like so let's go back the next is the single post layout so we have five different single post layouts to choose from so if you go ahead and select this particular single post and you can choose the layout of your choice just simply go with the one that you like okay again i'm going to go with the first option because i like that one the most and over here we have the pagination settings so pagination is okay let's go back to our home page first and the pagination is if you scroll to the bottom this section over here is called the pagination so in the free theme you only had one pagination layout which was to have the numbered pagination type but with the pro theme you get four different pagination type so from here you can choose default which will show the older or the next post and from here you get load more button options so if your users click over here then it will load more that you have and if you go ahead and enable the auto infinite scroll then it will show no button no numbers or basically it will just not show any pagination at the bottom it will directly load all the posts that you have created in your website in your home page at once just like this so when they scroll down they will not see any pagination or no number buttons over here i'm going to change it back to the way it was before and now let's go back and see what other options we have Okay, so we are done with the layout settings. Let's go back and let's see what we have under appearance settings. So under the appearance settings, under background, so in the free theme, we only had the option to add the image, but with the pro theme, we can also add a pattern to our background. So we have 63 unique, awesome background patterns for your site background, and you can easily choose from one of the options available. So if you have a taste for a darker one, you can go for a darker one. If you have a taste for something lighter with just light textures, you can also go with that. Or if you have a taste for something like this just some checkered box or just plain style such as this one you can also go for this and if you want to revert back just click on no bg which means no background will be displayed so let's go back and let's check out the typography settings so typography settings is pretty much the same as it was in our free theme but with the pro theme you get an option to choose your header font and style and also the header font size so if you want to go ahead and change the header of your content then you can simply come to typography and you can simply go ahead and choose one of the six header settings options that we get with our pro theme so under the body settings the primary and secondary font as well as changing the font size is the same but if you go ahead and click here you will see all the different options of google fonts that are available you don't have to go through them manually just scroll down and any fonts that you like just copy this font name and then you can come back and search for the fonts from over here so the next option is the locally host google fonts so if you go ahead and enable this option it loads the google font from your own server 
rather than from Google CDN and what it does is it helps in speed optimization of your website. So I would highly recommend you to enable the locally host Google funds and then click on publish. So about these I will come back to this when I'm explaining the performance settings. Let's get back. All right, so that was it about typography and now let's go ahead and explore the general settings. So from the general setting, the top bar settings, you have the option to enable the top bar on top of your header. So if you go ahead and enable this, you can either add your CTA buttons, you can add your privacy policies and from over here, you can change the notification text, you can change the notification button label and over here, you can add the notification button link so that when your users click on this CTA button or just some privacy page, then when they click on this, they land on the relevant page and you also have the option to enable to open them in the new window from over here simply have to enable or disable this toggle as per your choice so apart from the button link you can also add newsletter on the top bar so what you have to do is you have to enter the short code that you had copied and pasted in your newsletter settings when you had configured the newsletter section so just go back and from the newsletter settings copy this short code and go back to the top bar settings and simply paste it over here and the newsletter section will be displayed on top of your website right on your top bar above this secondary menu and this social media the search bar section over here so click on publish let's get back and the next is the slider settings so from here you get extra slider settings so you have the option to either disable or enable the slider and choosing the slider content style from latest post and category is the same as free theme but under the pro theme you can also choose various pages for your slider content style so if you choose pages all the pages are going to be shown in your slider section and if you choose custom then you have the option to customize your own unique slider so for that you'll have to click on add new slide so you can simply add the image of your choice and you can add in the title you can also add in the subtitle and you will have to add the link that will take your users to the relevant page so you can also go ahead and add a new slide from over here and the process is same. I'm going to quickly move it back to category the way it was before and from this option you can also include the repetitive post. So if you choose to include the repetitive post, all the posts that are showing in your slider section is also going to be shown in our home page just the way it is showing right now i'm going to disable the toggle with the slider auto you can enable the slider auto transition you with the slider loop you can enable or disable the slider to move in a loop and with the slider caption you can either disable or enable the captions the choice is yours and from over here you can choose the slider animation of your choice let's get back and the featured area settings so with the pro theme we can also customize our featured area section so choosing the page and the featured content one two and three from for your featured area section is the same as the free theme but with the pro theme you get to customize your featured area section so you also have the option to enable to open the featured area section in the new tab and if you have to custom you simply have to click on add new featured content click on add image select the image of your choice and from here you can add in the title you can also add in the subtitle and then you will have to add the link to this content that you have added so similarly you can add two more rows right over here let's remove this and i will choose my featured area the way it was before now let's get back 
Next is the social media settings. So social media settings is the same just the way we had in our free theme. So I'll not go into this, but you can go ahead and add new links if you wish to. So the next option is that of the social sharing buttons. So this is the social sharing buttons that we had also seen when we explored the website after we had installed and activated or updated to the pro theme. So if you have not already enabled this, you can also go ahead and disable or you can enable this by sliding this toggle over here. And you also have the option to enable the open graph meta tags. So just to give you a brief idea of what this is, if you want to go ahead and share one of the posts from over here in your social media, then the open graph meta tags determine how your link is going to look like in that specific page. And you can also disable this option if you're using Jetpack, Yoast or other plugin to maintain the open graph meta tags. And from over here, you can select the number of social sharing buttons. You simply have to click on this icon over here and with various social sharing buttons added, they will keep on adding on this share button underneath this share button over here and you can also go ahead and sort these social sharing buttons so whichever order that you toggle them the same order will be displayed in your website over here click on publish let's get back and the seo settings is same as it was in the free theme so i will not go into this the next is the post blogs and pages settings. So we have got many more options from over here. The page sidebar layout, post sidebar layout, along with enabling the block excerpt, excerpt length and the read more text is the same. So the extra options that we get apart from the options that we already got with our free theme is the block post image crop. So this is a very important feature because what it does is so regardless of your image size it is going to display the full image or your image will not get cropped if you enable this option so if you disable this the image size will be cropped as per the predetermined dimension of the block website feature but if you go ahead and enable this then it will avoid that automatic cropping so it is a very important feature that you get and the single post crop image is also very important because when you enable the block post image crop it will only enable to avoid the automatic cropping of featured image on the home page but if you enable this then for all the posts that you have created even in the single post, the image cropping will be avoided. So that is how it works. And the related post section title is the same. You can change it from you may also like to anything else that you want. So over here, you can choose the related post taxonomy. So it can either be based in category or the tags, but I would recommend you to choose the categories to display related posts. So over here, you can choose to show a popular post if you enable this again and popular articles. If you go ahead and enable the show comments option, it will show the option to leave a comment or a blog post so if your users want to interact with you regarding a specific post that you have created then they can easily click over here and leave their comment and this is very helpful because not only will your users be able to connect to you directly but you will also be able to know about what their preferences are the next option is to hide the category again this option is the same it was in the free theme. If you hide it, the categories are going to be hidden. So if you go ahead and hide the post author, the post author is going to be hidden. And if you hide the posted date, the posted date is going to be hidden. The hide prefix in the archive page is the same. So the next option is to show the author signature in your single blog posts. So if you go ahead and select one of the posts, so right underneath you can display your author signature. So you have to select the image 
and as you can see the author signature has appeared right under your blog post so if you go ahead and enable the social links the social links are also going to be shown over here so these are the social links which you had added in your author bio section so they are automatically going to be shown over here and you can also choose the alignment for your author signature from left right and center so after all the changes click on publish and that was it about our posts blogs and pages settings the newsletter settings okay let's go to top and go to our home page first the newsletter settings is the same as it was in the free theme so i will not go into it and also the instagram settings is the same so i will also not go into it and the next one is the miscellaneous settings so the first option that you have under miscellaneous settings is the admin bar so admin bar if you do not know what it is it is the stop bar which is showing when you use your customizer so if you go ahead and disable this and go ahead and reload your website okay publish it first and then reload your website then the admin bar is going to disappear from top so i'm going to go ahead and enable this again so lightbox is another feature so it is a stylized pop-up that basically allows your visitors to have a look at the images in larger version without having to open them in the new tab so i'll show you how you can make use of this function so come down if you go ahead and open one of your posts then if you click on this image over here it is not opening up but I will show you how you can add an image and also make it pop up using the lightbox feature so simply enable this toggle click on publish and now what you'll have to do is you'll have to go back and from the posts click on all posts so click on edit so let me add an image right at the top so at the time of selecting the image this file url that is showing over here you have to make sure you copy the url and then select the image so this icon over here it gives you the option to insert link so click over here and then paste the link that you had copied and then you have to click over here to apply it and now the link has been applied so just click on update and now we will go to our website and reload it again so come down and we will open the same post where we had added the image so if you click on this it is going to open up like this so your visitors will have the chance to take a look at the images that you have put in larger version so this is how you can make use of the light box feature i'm going to go back to the home page and this is how the light box works so the next option is you have the option to enable or disable the header search in the header form so if you disable this the search bar will disappear and the next option is the sticky header so if you enable this when you scroll down on a certain post or a page then the sticky header is going to be showing so the last option is to make the last widget sticky so what this does is as you can see if i scroll down and after the sidebar section ends or after the widgets that i have added on my sidebar comes to an end this blank space is showing so if i go ahead and enable this feature it is going to make the sidebar sticky so the blank section is not going to be shown anymore so it basically makes your sidebar sticky. All right, so that was it about the miscellaneous settings. I'm going to go ahead and publish the changes I have made and now go back. So let's see what we have under performance settings. So performance settings, um, just to give you a slight idea about what it is, all the settings that are over here, it basically helps in the optimization of your website. So let's go ahead and explore the options and the features that we have. So if you enable the lazy loading, what this does is 
it enables the lazy or the slow loading of the featured images so when your users are scrolling down on your website until and unless they reach the specific posts or the specific section of your website the images are going to take some time to load so when they're scrolling down like this the images are not going to be loaded at once only when they reach a certain section the images are going to be loaded and this feature is useful if you want your users to spend some time in a website and take a look at what your website has to offer and the lazy load of the content images it's the same idea as the lazy load the only thing is it enables the lazy loading of the images that are inside of the blog posts. The next is the lazy load gravatar. So if you have a gravatar image, if you have used a gravatar image, enabling this option will lazy load the gravatar image. So the deferred JavaScript and remover parameters, I will not go into the technical details of it, but these are basically used for the speed optimization of your website. And if you have not added and enabled any plugins to speed optimize your website, then you can go ahead and enable them both. About the locally host Google fonts, I've already gone into it, so I will not dive into it. So let's make the necessary changes and then click on publish. So that was it about the performance settings. Now let's get back. And the last option is the Google Analytics settings. So since I have already explored this option or settings in the free theme and it is the same, so I will not go into this either. So that was it about the general settings. We'll go back. And the next option is the sidebar settings. So in the free theme, you only had one sidebar option. So this sidebar would have to be used in all of your pages. But with the pro theme, you can have a different sidebar for your home page, your single page and also for your single post. So you can go ahead and explore the options that are over here. So please feel free to explore this option. Let's get back and the next option is the advertisement settings so these options basically allow you to add advertisement before or after your blog posts archive and before and after the content so for the before posts archive ad settings if you are enabling the ad before posts you have to click over here and you also have the option to open this link in the new tab so what you have to do is you have to select the image from over here and okay you also have the option to crop but i'm going to skip cropping and you have to place or enter your ad link over here but if you are not choosing this option and if you want to enable the before posts ad code then you have to enable this and disable this option over here so what you have to do is you have to post your before post ad code over here so it is that simple you can choose from either of these options over here and it is the same with after posts archive ad settings. The only difference is that when you enable ad after posts, the ads are going to be displayed after posts in home or archive page. So let's go back and the before content ad settings. If you enable the ad before content, the ad is going to be shown before the content in a single post page. And the process is same as the post archive ad settings. If you are adding an image, you have to enable this option, select an image from over here. And then put a link over here so that when your users click on this image, they're going to land on the ad link page. And if you're adding code, simply disable this and enable the enable before content ad option and then you'll have to place your ad code over here. So let's get back. And it is the same with after content. The only difference is that if you enable ad after content, the advertisement is going to show after content in single post page and not before the content. All right, so that was it about the advertisement settings. Now the menus option, I have already covered it, so I will not go into it also the widgets have already been covered and so is the home page settings so i have not gone into this because they are similar to what we had in our free theme so since they are already 
explained and explored i will not go into it so the next option is the footer copyright text so in our pro theme we have the option to edit the entire footer copyright text so if you want to disable both the wordpress link and the author link they're both going to be hidden and in place of this copyright text if you want to go ahead and add something else you can also do that so if you want to go ahead and add only 2020 copyright then only that is going to be displayed or if you simply want to have the way it was before then only the copyright text is going to be shown or if you do not want to display this then again you have that option as well so let's get back and the next option is of the additional CSS so it is the same as the free theme if you want to change or customize the appearance and layout of your site you can simply add your additional CSS over here so let's get back and the last option that we have is that of customizer reset so if you click over here this gives you the option to reset all the customizer settings all the customizations that you have ever made by a customizer so just make sure that you have carefully read every single sentence every single words before you hit this button and also make sure to check out this huge attention label over here but this is also very useful if you want to just completely disable everything every settings that you have made via your customizer all right let's go to the top and that was all about the blossom feminine pro theme now lastly okay let's cross this out lastly we will just take a final look at our website and see how it looks like all right so that was it about how you can create a website using blossom feminine free and pro theme i hope you liked this video and if you did please give us a like and subscribe to our channel your support means a lot to us and if you have any questions any queries please feel free to drop them down in the comment section below or you can also reach out to our support team i will leave a link down in the description box below so that if you face any kind of issues then you can easily reach out to our support team so that was it for this video thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you in the next video tutorial